Evolution's 15 Myths That Explain Our World is a book about the birth of the universe and the evolution of life on planet Earth. If you're interested in our latest scientific understanding of the Big Bang and the creation of the solar system, of the origins of life as a single cell, of the great transformations of life on our planet from the birth of multicellular life through the invention of sex and the invention of vision and flight, the birth of consciousness and of language, then Evolution is a book that tells this large saga in lyrical, accessible stories. But on another level, Evolutions is also a book about the relationship between myth on the one hand and science on the other hand. All cultures have always written their myths in order to understand great existential mysteries. Where did we come from? Where are we going? What's the meaning of all this? These questions don't always have easy answers. In fact, they don't always have answers at all. Science, on the other hand, professes to provide solutions to questions that have answers. It's a process of investigation that's been honed over hundreds of years, thousands of years, to allow us to provide objective knowledge about our realities and about ourselves. And so science and myth look like two very different things. And modern science promised to be a replacement for the old stories, the old mythologies. Except when you looked more closely at science, you see that science is produced by human beings, human beings who use human language. And human language always has metaphor in it. And our metaphors are very sensitive to our times, to our cultures. They change over time. When you think of the brain and how we thought of it in the 17th century, it was a hydraulic system in miniature encased in our skull. In the 19th century, it became a telegraph switchboard. In the 20th century, with the advent of brain sciences, we thought of the brain as a neural network. And today, we often speak of it as a quantum computer. Each one of these brains is a different brain, a different entity of which we ask different questions. Once we thought that there was an ether to carry the electromagnetic waves, and we were sure that there were epicycles in the heavens to regularize the motions of the heavenly bodies. Today we believe that there is no such thing as an ether. There are no epicycles. Science changes over time. And so it may be the case that while we understand our human natures today to a great extent with genes, that in 100 years from now or 200 years from now, there will be no genes left. We won't speak of ourselves in those terms, but in other terms that explain our biology more, more precisely. And so even though science and mythology look like two very different things, in fact, when you look more closely, they have very interesting similarities. And in evolutions, what I do is use our modern scientific idiom in order to hark back to the age-old themes of world mythology and try to provide a novel understanding of things like jealousy and sacrifice and death and love and motherhood and hope. And I hope that you'll find this book enlightening and a lot of fun.